Hi guys. Recently, I helped Nathan take down his tank. If you're a longtime subscriber to the Title Gardens channel, you've probably seen footage from his tank countless times over the past several years. But all good things come to an end, and in a sense, this is an end of an era with this tank. The bright side to this is that it's going to be replaced with a much larger custom aquarium with an accompanying frag system, so let's not be too quick to shed a tear about this tank going away. What we will shed a tear over is the effort that it's going to take to do this move. This past weekend was not the day that the new tank came. It's actually a much more challenging intermediate move that was needed to prepare the location for the new tank when it does arrive later this month. The show tank that we're moving today is a 220 gallon custom tank made by AGE and it's going to be replaced with a tank nearly twice the size in the same location. This entire room is going to be prepped for this new tank, so the big thing is the flooring needed a change. When this show tank was originally installed, this room had carpet. The old carpet is getting replaced with tile, which is a million times better for obvious reasons. If you don't know what I mean, tank spills will happen, and if you give it a few years, the carpet under your tank will be pretty much zombie apocalypse level scary. Well, it's been 10 years or something, and what's under this tank is definitely freak show material. Replacing the carpet with tile is an obvious choice. Thing is, the old tank has to move in order to allow for the new tile to go in. You can already see that most of the tile work is done, but that last stretch needs this tank to be moved. So the plan is pretty straightforward. We're going to break down both the show tank and the frag tank into these Rubbermaid stock tanks. Disassemble a snake pit of wires, undo the plumbing, switch out all the devices, and move both tanks across the room and set them all back up in one day. Sounds like fun. I often get asked how to go about moving a tank. Normally, my answer is to have a tank set up already at the new location. So when you transfer all the livestock out, you can just get them into their new home as quickly as possible and with as little stress as possible for yourself. This alone is a ton of work and it's really risky on its own. The worst case is something similar to what we have to do here, which is to fully break down a tank and reinstall it all in the same day. Once you move the fish and coral out, you're basically on a timer to get the job done. It takes a lot of time to disassemble a tank this complicated and then to reassemble it all. If I had to guess, I'd say that this move took about 12 hours. The only thing that could have made this, well, a whole lot worse would be to have to load it all up and move it across the country and then set it up in a new location. If you ever find yourself in a situation like that, all I can say is just don't. You'd be so much better off selling absolutely everything and rebuilding from scratch in the new location. It is an insane amount of work, and moving the animals that distance, it's likely to get very ugly. I cannot stress this enough. Moving is a nerve-wracking experience on its own, but to also be moving an aquarium full of delicate marine life? Yeah, big yikes. So, please don't. I once did a similar breakdown to this a long time ago by myself, practically. I was replacing a 75 gallon tank with a 120 gallon tank, and the plan was to take down the 75, move it out of the way, and install the 120 gallon where the 75 used to be. It was so much more work than I imagined, and when it got to evening time, a friend came over to help. Mind you, this is already probably six hours into the move. We worked an additional six hours until about midnight and we got it done and I somehow narrowly avoided a nervous breakdown. To this day, when I see that friend, he brings up this one time he helped me out and no joke, it was 20 plus years ago. And honestly, I expect him to keep bringing it up for about the next 10 years. I hope you get the picture. These moves, they're really not that fun. Puppy dogs and rainbows aside, 
Let's see if I can inject some learning experiences from Nathan's move to help you out if you ever find yourself in a situation like this where you need to do a pretty big move of a pretty large and complicated system. Number one, friends. The first thing is to not be shy to ask for help. If anyone is willing to help, bring them over. Being able to delegate the smallest of tasks is so incredibly helpful. It's not even funny. Just having an extra set of hands to take a piece of equipment outside and hose it off while other work is getting done, super underrated. Even just having somebody hold an end of a hose while a tank is draining is nice. Obviously, once the heavy lifting starts, having more people around to help, great. Number two, plumbing. A big move like this is where you see the value of thoughtful plumbing design. What do I mean by that? An overlooked aspect of good plumbing is not how well everything fit together and managed to not leak. It's how easily everything comes apart. Unions, and especially true union ball valves, are lifesavers. Even when you aren't moving an aquarium, they are helpful for maintenance because over time, the insides of the pipes do build up with sessile inverts that can reduce the performance of those pipes. For smaller aquariums with minimal plumbing, it's not as big of a deal. But once you have a system with any degree of size and complexity like this one, with sump, frag system all plumbed together, more union points pretty much becomes a necessity. When you're designing your next system, keep this in mind. It's not how well it comes together, it's how well it comes apart. Number three, extra salt water. Very few people have dedicated holding tanks for their RO and salt water makeup. The home aquariums featured on this channel tend to be larger and significantly higher end than the average. So almost every one of them has a similar system to have both purified fresh water and newly mixed salt water on demand. It is a nice thing to have on a day-to-day -day basis for tank maintenance, but for a tank move like this, it is incredibly helpful to have a lot of extra water on hand. During this move, I would estimate that we used an additional 150, maybe 200 gallons of freshly mixed salt water. Most of it was used to fill the Rubbermaid holding tanks, where we would probably take maybe half the show tank water and half from the salt water container, and later when we moved the tank to its new location and started refilling, we used even more freshly mixed salt. Long story short, when it comes time to make a big move, be sure to have plenty of extra salt water on hand. You're going to need it. Number four, sand is gross. I 100% don't have a dog in this fight when it comes to bare bottom versus substrate. I really don't. I have both in various systems at my place, and I can see reasons why both would be great. Sand looks a lot more natural, while a bare bottom is a lot cleaner and makes maintenance easier. Today, however, is one of those situations where bare bottom would have been a lot nicer. This is a 10-year-old sand bed, and when debris gets kicked up, that silt stayed in suspension for pretty much the entire time, making it hard to find every last coral and catch every last fish. We did it, but it would have been a lot easier to do in something that didn't look like a milkshake. One thing I wish we had was one of those old school canister filters with those pleated micron membranes, if you know what I mean. I don't even know if they're made anymore, but the one I'm thinking of was a Magnum 350 canister filter. Not even super high-end, they're pretty cheap. You can find them at one time at every pet store. I would love to have been able to run a few of those while we ate lunch or dinner and have it polish up the water so when we got back to work, we could actually see into the tank. Like I said, I don't think that they're made anymore, so if you guys know of a good micron filter, let me know in the comments below. Number five, complexity. This last point isn't really much of a tip but more of a thought exercise. As a big tank ages, a lot of times it goes through what I would call technology creep. We're always looking for ways to improve how we do this hobby, 
What could we add to make some parameter more stable or some maintenance tank easier? It's times like this where it's good to do an audit of what is really important to set back up and what can be removed to make for an overall more elegant system going forward. In my systems, we try to do this every few months and it's amazing what random nonsense that we'll come across. Sometimes it's a power strip with nothing plugged into it. Sometimes it's a device that has long since died. For example, in Nathan's tank, there's a C-swirl return oscillator that stopped oscillating years ago. Probably not a thing that needs an outlet space in the future, right? It's also a good idea to check on items that could be leaking stray voltage into the water. When diving in and cleaning this much stuff, someone is bound to get a little hangnail or something that gets that special tingle. Let's see what stuff we can unplug to make that tingle go away. The usual suspects for voltage leaks are old pumps and heaters. Number six, I'll throw this bonus nugget in there. I realize that not every install has the space to allow for a remote sump, and that sump has to go under the stand. If you can though, I would recommend trying to locate the sump in a spot that's easier to work in. In Nathan's case here, there is still very much a space constraint. So when he gets his new tank, the sump will still be going underneath. But man, I would really have liked all this under the tank clutter to be remotely isolated to make it all easier to work on. Anyway guys, that pretty much does it from here. New tank will be arriving soon and I'll be around to document it when that move-in process takes place. Till next time, happy reefing.